a philosophical view of the digital history of concepts, four theses and a postscript. The four theses of my contribution are laid down in the abstract, so I have uh, organized the presentation in a slightly different way. Please consult the book of abstracts. Um, if you want to understand the title in its original form. The plan today, I will speak first briefly about concepts in conceptual history. This will lead to problems um, that suggest we should look uh, towards philosophical theories of concepts, whether or not they may contribute to a better understanding of concepts in conceptual history. Um, I will then discuss what specific consequences we must draw from the discussion of concepts in conceptual history and philosophy in digital conceptual history. Um, this will lead me to a suggestion of a different approach, conceptual history as a digital history of word use. In the end, I'll briefly discuss um, how conceptions of concepts are used outside conceptual history in the digital humanities. A very fundamental presupposition of the discipline of conceptual history as it has uh, evolved after World War II is that concepts must be in some meaningful sense be different from mere words. This is a thesis you find both in Kozelek and Peter von Bella. Um, but conceptual historians have some problems to explain what this difference does exactly consist. On the other hand, they seem to suggest that um, the assumption of the existence of concepts is an essential presupposition uh, for the examination, for example, of phenomena of semantic change. So we need to have something uh, unchanging, a substance, you could say, yes. Uh, Aristotle would uh, propose. We need something unchanging in order um, to evaluate changes of its properties. Um, in trying to find answers to the question um, why we need the notion of a concept and uh, how concepts may be different from words, um, it seems to be obvious that maybe philosophy can make a contribution and help us to understand these problems um, in a better way. Um, however, I think that the main problem in trying to utilize philosophical insights about concepts in fields outside philosophy is that concepts are relevant not just in one or two to three, depending on how you individuate them, uh, philosophical subdisciplines. So, on the other one hand, um, concepts are, of course, an essential topic uh, in trying to understand human thought, and therefore um, uh, an important topic of discussion in philosophy of mind. On the other hand, concepts are also building blocks of language. And if we want to understand for example, how language relates to the world, or what role concepts may play in our reasoning, we must also uh, discuss them in the philosophy of language or the philosophy of logic. Um, this distinction does not neatly map on the second distinction I want to introduce today, um, but there may be certain tendencies in both of these different fields uh, to align with one uh, of these positions. Namely, um, you can conceive concepts, if you pardon the pun, uh, either as mental entities of states, something in the mind of a human, or as notions, um, entities that exist in some sense independently from minds of thinkers uh, entertaining these concepts, reflecting on these concepts, uh, thinking about them. Uh, unfortunately, there is no conclusive evidence uh, whether we should align with, uh, you could say, subjectivist or objectivist camp. 
In other words, if we want to use philosophical insights outside philosophy, for example, in the digital humanities, they simply do not have reached uh, the kind of consensus that we would need in order to rely on these results um, with some degree of confidence. I would therefore suggest that conceptual historians are better off if they do away with the notion of a concept. Because ultimately, I think, at least in digital uh, history of concepts, the notion of a concept may not be needed. Um, the, the recipe for this, you could say, uh, was proposed uh, in 1995 by the American philosopher Richard Rorty. I read out the quote, any exploration of presuppositional relations between concepts in which you may engage will take the form of an argument that you could not use some words in certain ways if you did not use some other words in certain other ways. Without an explicit reference to this passage, the practice of digital conceptual history already accepts this uh, thesis of Rorty, namely uh, to investigate the history of concepts as a history of virtues, as a Schwann would say, or as the history of um, vocabularies, uh, as you find it in the paper by the team of Simon Hennchen. Um, by the way, uh, historical footnote, the concept of a vocabulary is a Rorty concept. Um, so, what does this lack of clarity with regard to the notion of a concept in conceptual history mean for the digital history of concepts? Um, I said that we should do away with the notion of a concept in conceptual history. Strictly speaking, uh, I do not aim to be prescriptive for colleagues working outside the digital history of uh, concepts. Uh, my main thrust in this presentation uh, is to admonish digital conceptual historians to maintain a certain, you could say, epistemological modesty. So, we should be careful about which claims about concepts um, can be uh, justified by an appeal to the results of digital analysis. And the reason for this is a methodolo methodological assumption um, you may question or that may be open to discussion, namely that the objects of study in the digital humanities must in some sense be operationalized. Speaking more concretely, the notion of a concept in digital history of concepts must be translatable into a formal language, namely a programming language, that is, into code. This means that if we want to do digital history of concepts, we need to have some criteria for what to count as a concept. And traditional history of concepts, and as we have seen philosophy as well, does not really provide operationalizable definitions of concepts. What does it mean to um, dedicate oneself instead to a digital history of virtues? Um, if we look at the at recent publications in the area of digital conceptual history, we see that for example, the, the team of Debola uh, looks at word embeddings. Uh, Dürke Schwann analyzes co-occurrences. Um, and such approaches already do or, or practice what Rorty suggests, namely um, to look at what they presume to be concepts through patterns of word use and the structure of vocabularies and their change. So, the practice of digital historians can be um, 
conducted equally well uh, without appealing to the notion of concepts, limiting one's claims to histories or virtues. Um, now you may say, okay, digital conceptual history is maybe not at the center of attention of the age. Uh, and I would probably agree. Um, this is why I believe that um, the, the problem I wanted to introduce here has consequences that go beyond the approach of digital conceptual history. For example, um, in ontologies, the semantic web, and uh, in the sphere of linked open data. Because if and insofar uh, you rely on ontologies um, to work in these areas, and that seems to be almost in inevitable, I think, um, you must accept what these ontologies say, claim, state about concepts. Side of CRM defines concepts as non-material products of our minds and other human-produced data that have become objects of discourse about their identity, circumstances of creation, or historical implication. A non-material product of a mind is not itself a mental state, so it seems that side of CRM um, sides with the objectivist um, philosophers who believe that concepts can exist independently uh, from their givenness in concrete minds of human thinkers. Scores, on the other hand, says that concepts are ideas or notions, a unit of thought. However, what constitutes a unit of thought is subjective, and this definition is meant to be suggestive rather than restrictive. The authors of this specification demonstrate a certain awareness um, of the complications uh, involved in any definition of what a concept is, but still terms like idea, notion, a unit of thought at least suggest that they would probably um, side with the subjectivist camp uh, in philosophy looking at concepts primarily through the lens of psychology. I do not know yet, it might be a matter deserving further investigation, um, whether it makes sense to look at ontologies and the role these definitions play in ontologies um, on a more, in a more general perspective. Um, so, the, the next question would then be to which extent are these definitions and the uh, classes they have to define uh, linked to other classes and what does a parsimonious understanding of concepts mean for the definitions of, for example, subclasses of conceptual objects inside of CRM, but uh, that's not a topic for today. Uh, instead, I uh, will just summarize what I've been talking about. Um, we must accept that we do not yet know what a concept is, and whether or not we will ever find a consensus definition that can be used in various disciplines of the age uh, is an open question. However, I believe that's not really a problem for conceptual historians because we can do digital conceptual history without having a substantial definition or notion of a concept. But this then means that we should also accept that investigations, digital investigations in digital conceptual history have a limited scope. We look at words and patterns of word use and may not make more far-reaching claims about um, underlying um, conceptual entities. And we probably should uh, extend this approach 
and look at other areas of the age and practices in the age uh, that rely on some substantial uh, definition or conception of a concept and ask ourselves to which extent um, this is really yeah, in, in uh, technical language a necessary dependence. Thank you very much for your attention.